come this morning. Father, we worship you. King of kings and Lord of lords, we give you praise. We give you glory, O oh God. We give you honor. We give you praise, O oh God, for you are worthy. You are King of kings, O oh God, Lord of lords. You, O oh God, are ancient of days, and as old as you are, you remain the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, O oh God, you never change. So we worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory, O oh God. We give you honor this morning that is due unto you. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies, O oh God. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, O oh God. And we just want to say thank you for you are worthy. We thank you, O oh God, for bringing us here safely. We thank you, O oh God, for carrying us, O oh God, through, O oh God, an entire week and bringing us, O oh God, to a new week, O oh God. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you praise, O oh God. We present this service before you this morning. We ask, O oh God, that your will be done. That your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven this morning in our midst. Oh God, we pray that you will dwell among us. You will dwell among us. May your presence dwell, oh God, in us and through us. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence this morning. And we ask that you dwell. You dwell. You dwell among us us in the name of Jesus have your way oh God in Jesus name we give you praise amen we honor you God thank you Jesus we bless your name Father be glorified in this place with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise With a heart of thanks giving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with my hands, my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. And I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With a heart of, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. 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 With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord, I, I will bless thee, O Lord, I will bless thee, O Lord, and I will bless thee, Oh Lord, I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless, I will bless thee, I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will, I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will 
with a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the Lord. I will Lord. bless the Lord. Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. One more time. With a heart of thanksgiving, and with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. Thank you, God. We honor you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is anyone in the house this morning? Is anyone in the house this morning? Can I get a shout of praise? Can I get a shout of praise? Our next song is Sing Praises Unto God, Sing Praises. So lift up your voices with us. Let's worship together. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. What do you do when they Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. And nobody's away. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is the King. For God is the King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, all ye people. For He is to be praised, to be praised. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Oh, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Let our bodies sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is the King, for God is the King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, Woo! all ye people. For He is to be praised, to be praised. Sing praises. Sing to God, sing praise. And all my days I will sing praises unto God, sing praise. You say I will sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praise. Sing praises unto God, sing praises unto God, sing praise. Oh, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praise. You say I will sing praises. Sing praises unto God, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praise. When there is trouble, sing in your praises life. unto God, sing praise. Sing praises unto God. Sing Praise unto God, sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God is the King. For God is the King over all the earth. And sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, all ye people. For He is to be praised. To be praised, I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for what He has done for me. I feel like running, I feel like running. 
skipping, running, skipping, skipping, running, running. To praise the Lord for what He has for done. what He has done for me. He has set, he has set my, my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. I feel like running. I feel like running. I feel like skipping. Yeah. Skipping. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For what He has done. For what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running. I feel like running. Skipping. Praise the Lord. Before we continue, I feel like this is a bit of a, you can keep playing, it's a bit of a dead atmosphere and I don't like dead atmospheres. So what I'm going to encourage all of us to do is step out of our seats, and there's only a few of us but that's okay, step out of your seats, greet somebody, skip with them, jump with them because when we think about it, we've been through a lot and we need to give God more of a praise because he deserves it, amen? Does he deserve it? Does he deserve it? So I want all of us to get out of our seats. I know there's a few of us, but get out of your seat. Greet somebody. Worship with them. And tell them of what God has done for you. Amen. I feel like, I feel like running, skipping, skipping, praising the Lord. Praise the Lord for what he has, for what he has done for me. He has set, he my, has set my spirit I feel like, I feel running, like running, running, skipping. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what, for what He has done for me. I feel like running. I feel like running. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Skipping, running, running, running. Skipping, skipping, running, running. Skipping, skipping, running, running. Skipping, skipping, running, running. Skipping, skipping, running, running. Skipping. Skipping, singing, singing, dancing, dancing, shouting, shouting, running, running, skipping, skipping, running, running, skipping, skipping, praising, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping, praise the Lord. For what he has done for me. For what he has done. For, for what he has done for me. One more time for what he has done. For, for what he has done for me. We can do it again. We can do it again. Let's go again. I feel like running, running. skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit will praise His name Even then, even then could, not, could not hold Him captive Even in the grave He is Lord Even then, even then could not hold Him captive Even in the grave he is Lord, my soul, my soul, does magnify the Lord, and my spirit prays, and my spirit prays His name, even death, even death could not hold it captive, and even in the grave, He is Lord. Holding captive, and even in the grave. 
death, Lord, even death, even death, could not hold it captive, even in the grave, he is Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God, that even in the grave, even in the grave you rose from that and you were not held captive and because of that we don't have to be held captive by anything we honour you God we thank you hallelujah we honour you Father You are worthy of my praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of my
call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. For you have chosen to call me your own. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for arguments. You are God. You are God all by yourself. If you believe it, sing. You are God from beginning to the end. You are. You are God. Only you, God. From beginning to the end. And there is no place. There's no place for us. For you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God. Sing you are God. From beginning to the end. And there is no place for us. There's no place for us. Yourself. You are, sing, you are God, yes you are, you are God, from beginning to, to the, the end, end, there's no place, there's no place for you are you, sing, you, are you are God all by yourself. God all by yourself As you are worthy of my praise Oh you are worthy of my praise God is worthy of our praise. The psalmist said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy, worthy. And oh, that men and women, boys and girls, oh, the heavens and the earth and all things under the earth would praise God for who he is. A great God a glorious God, a good God, and we call him Father because that's who he is. And so we come this morning reading out of the Psalm 149, a psalm of praise. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. Would you just say praise the Lord? 
Would you raise your right hand and say, Praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Say it one more time. Like you, you mean it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that really means also hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord indeed. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in his honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of the Lord, praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punish them, to, to, uh, punish on their peoples and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his saints. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. And so we come this morning to praise his name, to lift him up. And though we are few today, the Lord said, wherever two or three are gathered, he's there in the midst. And he's there for a good reason. And where he is, he comes with all his blessings, his benefits. I'd rather be here this morning than anywhere else. Anywhere else. For a day in his courts is better than somewhere else, a thousand somewhere else. And the psalmist said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Thank God this morning. So we praise him. Just in your own way, before I pray the closing prayer, say a prayer to God, thanking him this morning. We've come through Thanksgiving. Is that thanksgiving still in our hearts? Echoing in our hearts still? Praising him for what he has done, what, who he is for, toward us? Is there thanksgiving in, thanksgiving in your heart this morning? So just go ahead and praise God out of your heart this morning in your own way. In your own way this morning. Open your mouth, please now. Just open your mouth to God this morning. You know... <laughs> When we go to a basketball game, a football game, whatever, we're allowed, we can't keep our voice uh, low. Let's praise our God this morning. thanks we give you praise we honor you the wonderful God that you are we have just celebrated Thanksgiving as one day we set aside Father to acknowledge your goodness and greatness but oh that's not enough we carry a praise we carry gratitude in our hearts at all times because, because your blessings are ever new, ever morning. And this morning your word says, sing to the Lord a new song because God has done something new. Even today, he's done something new. And so we bless you, Father. We praise you. Thank you for life. 
Thank you for salvation. Thanks for the peace that you bring into our homes and our lives, oh God, for the transformation you brought to us, for the wonderful hope we have in you. Thank you, Father, for directing the course of our lives. And today, Father, we commit, commit those who are not with us today, those who have traveled. We pray for direction, we pray for protection. We pray that, that God help them to accomplish their, their mission and bring them back to us safely. That's our prayer today, Father. For those who are sick, we pray this morning a touch in their hearts. I pray for Maureen, my dear wife, Lord, who needs your touch, your healing touch. We're praying that that be so in her case, oh God, today. For Sister Latanya, Father, also needs your touch, Father. And there are others, no doubt, who are under the weather, Father. We pray in Jesus' name that you would reach out your hand, oh God, of healing, your hand of mercy and deliverance to your people. Raise them up, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Show yourself strong to be their healer, the God who heals, the God who restores, the God who delivers. Be that to them today, Father, we pray. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. God is good. It doesn't sound like it's all not sound like Brother Alex alone understands the what's going on. God is good. And all the time. Indeed. Um, we give God thanks for being here this morning and we continue to glorify his name and magnify his name. We have a few numbers, but that's okay. It was Thanksgiving weekend, so we understand that. Quite a bit of our people have traveled and are returning home today. So we continue to pray for journey in mercies for those who are traveling back home. And we just continue to give God praise and glory. Amen. Are you happy to be in God's house? Are you happy to be in God's house? Amen. I'm happy to see you guys. And I know that the Lord, our God, is here with us. Um, this morning, we're going to, I want to recognize our senior pastor, Dr. Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle. We continue to give God thanks for you. And in her absence, Pastor Dr. Maureen Grizzle. Could you put your hand together and just appreciate our pastors? We recognize um, Pastor Ash and Pastor um, Sister Kiwana Ash as well. We put your hand together and appreciate them. God bless you. God bless you. It's good to see everyone. It's good to see. I, I know our drummer might have gone back there to assist, but it's good to see Nathan um, with us this weekend. Put your hand together. And Nathan, we're so happy to see you. And he's this type of kid. If he gets a minute to be in Tulsa or to be home, he's going to come and do what God would have him to do for the church. And we continue to praise God for him. The announcements, um, on behalf of the leadership, I welcome you all here this morning, and I looked around and I don't see any visitors with us this morning, so we continue to give God praise and glory. Um, the burden of the leadership of hope is that all peoples, irrespective of racial, cultural, or ethnic background, will find a place where they truly belong as children of God. Hope is also creating a home away from home for people of different nations, resident in the U.S., who needs a place to fellowship and serve the Lord. Our vision. Thank you very much. Serving locally and reaching globally. And our 2020 theme, though it's coming down to an end, is overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. My question to you is, have you been having an outpouring of the Holy Spirit throughout 2020? Two, sorry. <laughs> Let me hurry on. Have you been um, having an overflowing of hope? You have been? Anybody? Well, if you've been having an overflowing of hope, see, New Year's Eve night is our crossover service. We want to hear your testimony of what God is doing 
in your life and what God has been doing in your life throughout 2022. So our crossover service will be held on December 31st, and we are aware of that. Um, the following Sunday is New Year's Sunday, and we have to be back in church. So we'll be meeting here at 10 p.m. until 12 p.m. So from 10 p.m. to 12 p.m., please invite everybody. We're coming out, and we want to have a cat of wampus time here. We want to come and have a time when we truly, like the children of Israel, dance before our king. Give him all praise and glory. This is the time where you let loose. You just let loose in the presence of God. So in his presence, there's, there's liberty in God's presence. And it's going to be a time when you come and we just worship together. You're going to testify. The mic will be available. Whatever God has brought you through to 2022, we want to hear about it. We're going to do it. And we're going to cross over 2023 victorious. Amen? Amen. And of course, December 18th is our Christmas service. That's just not too far away from now. So be here in your pump and pride. Um, <laughs> we're going to come out. We're going to have a good time celebrating um, the birth of Christ. And we, it promises to be uh, just a wonderful service. Christmas morning service is from 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. So if you come 9.01, you would have been late. We are starting on time because it's Christmas Day, and we know you, um, you want to go back home and finish your Christmas meal and all of those good stuff and be with your loved ones. But we're gathering Christmas morning because it's a Sunday morning. We're going to be gathering from 9 a.m. right into 10.30 a.m. Um, I almost say p.m. 10.30 a.m where um, we'll be dismissed and we'll enjoy the day with our loved ones. And I think um, morning prayers continue this week from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. There will be women's ministry, prayer, and Bible study tomorrow, Monday at 8, eight p.m. Bible studies on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and prayer session on Thursday at 8 p.m. I want to emphasize Bible study Wednesday night. It is a wonderful time to come together and learn. And I think this week, Wednesday, um, we'll be having some people presenting because we're talking about the different type of burials. So we're talking about cremation and actual burial and what, how the church feels about it. So we'll be presenting on that. So come and hear Pastor Philema and present his part and the rest of us talking about um, that as Dr. Grazel leads us. So come Friday night, um, Wednesday night, get on Zoom and be with us as we study the Word of God. The, um, there will be a brief meeting. I'm not sure if we're still going to do it because I'm not sure if we have a quota for it, but I'm going to leave that to pass. We're supposed to have a brief meeting after church today. A council, council meeting, a brief council meeting right after church today. And also, we're going to be having, um, I think there's a lay leadership meeting this Saturday coming at 10 a.m., right? So we continue to bear these things in mind, invite someone to church with you as we continue to worship God. At this time, we're going to be worshiping with our thighs and offering. And there are various ways that we can serve God with our tithes and offering that will be on the screen. Yes, you can... Get text to 84321 and then follow the prompt or you can cash up at Dollar Sign Hope International or you can mail checks or money order to um, 8086 South Yale Avenue and the rest of the address is there. The praise team, please. Offering time, offering time, blessing time, try again, offering time, there we go, okay, we got it. stand up and sing with us, the song is Hear My Cry, O Lord, hear my cry, O Lord, attend on to my prayer, from the ends of the earth, will I to you because my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I that is higher than I 
your glory father not just in this church but oh god to um use around the world to uh, minister to others who don't know you god thank you that we can give and that whatever that we have oh god you appreciate it and you take it with a gr- with a grateful heart oh god and i just pray that father you will continue to provide for those who don't have and that our offering will be a sacrifice um, of ourselves unto you in jesus name amen Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. And, you know, um, as we are preparing to hear from this, today's speaker, may I invite you to stand, please. And as we gather our hearts for the word of God this morning, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for, your, for this time when we will receive your words. We thank you for the person that you have anointed to bring your words to us this morning. May you give him power and authority as he speak, Lord. And may you give us receptive hearts to receive your words. May you speak to us as you've never done before. Even those who are watching virtually, may they receive you, Lord Jesus, in a way that they've never received you before. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 
At this time, I want to invite my brother, call him my brother because that's how we feel, I feel about him, and um, he's our associate pastor, Pastor Ash. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. During our time of worship, this is what the Lord said. Le Leviticus chapter 22 and verse 29. It says, and when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. When you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Amen. Today I'm feeling a bit uh, emotional. <laughs> feel the presence of God, so I'm a bit emotional this morning, but I thank God for the opportunity afforded right now that I can be his mouthpiece. Father, I thank you and I bless you. Pause at this moment to acknowledge you, O oh Lord, as God and King, as Lord and Master and Savior. You are God alone. Your God all by yourself. There's none in comparison to you, our great God. Thank you for being on our side, oh God. Thank you today. Thank you, oh God. Father, may your hands be upon your servant today and stands before your people as your mouthpiece. Let everything be said and done for your glory, for the edification of your people today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. I'm asking you to please stand for the reading of the word. Just stand once more. Thank you. And as I read, I invite you to follow along. Reading from verse 1 to verse 8. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. One cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then, one, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this, this had touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, 
here am I. Send me. You may be seated. I want to share with us today on the theme, get a hold of the vision. Get a hold of the vision. You see, within any organization, or at least most organizations, they are led and they are existing with a vision in mind. A few moments ago, Pastor Gail would have reminded us of the vision of hope. And the, the purpose of the vision is to steer the organization into a direction of success by focusing on the words of that same very vision. A vision is necessary. If we are to continue to exist, any organization, without living chaotic, there must be a vision within each and every person's mind that is affiliated or associated with such an organization. Proverbs 29, 18 reads, where there is no vision, the people perish. In the verse that we have read here, Isaiah got a hold of a vision. Within the vision, he described to us, which we have read, a temple. Within the temple, there is a throne. Upon the throne, there is a person. And around that throne, there are creatures. And Isaiah grabbed a hold of all that was being shown to him. And essentially what he saw within the vision was a picture of God's holiness. And when we talk about holiness, we are talking about the quality of being set apart from all that is evil and having a moral perfection. So when Isaiah saw in his vision, what he saw in his vision was a picture of moral perfection. A picture of someone who was set apart that was different than what his eyes was accustomed to seeing. Isaiah understood what God required. Because during the time, the children of Israel often come before God to offer sacrifices. And when we read the book of Leviticus chapter 22, we see where God commanded the priests and the Levites of acceptable offerings that were to be given, that were to be sacrificed unto him. And I would not go through the list of it. Just put a pin there on your notes so that you can refer to that. But essentially what God required as sacrifices offered unto him was those that were perfect. Therefore, the manged sheep, the defected animal, God would reject them all. Why? Because God stood as someone who was holy. And anything that was supposed to be rendered and given unto him ought to be holy as well. So when God gave the children of Israel this long list of what is acceptable and unacceptable, God was revealing to the children of Israel his very nature of what holiness means. Because God is holy, he cannot be associated with anything that is less than holy. So he commanded the children of Israel to come before him with sacrifices that were pleasing. Coincidentally, I read that first verse. 
when you offer your sacrifices of thanksgiving. Do it at your own will. Because God demands that which is acceptable. So Isaiah had this vision. And within his vision, one of the first things that he he is stating to his readers or his listeners, he is painting a picture of comparison or a contrast with the vision that he's seeing with a king called Uzziah. What does King Uzziah have to do with the vision that he's seeing? You see, Uzziah became king by the tender age of 16. And he led the children of Israel, Judah, for 52 years reigning. And it was a time that is described um, as the, just lost it there. The period of time. I forgot what it's called. But it was a period of peace. Prosperity. Is that what they call it? There was, I think there was a different term that they used to call that period of time. Golden age. Thank you very much, Dr. Grizzly. The golden age period. Because prosperity was there. King Uzziah was leading the armies into victory. The enemies were being defeated. Israel was at peace. They were happy. It was a glorious time for Judah. Under King Uzziah's leadership. But for the last few years of his reign, the Bible declares, King Uzziah turned from God. Pride arose within him. And we spoke briefly about that in Sunday school this morning when we talk about doing the works of God. Sometimes it comes to a point where as servants of God, we come, we, we, we get to a place where we are caught up with self. And arrogance and pride entering and we forget God. And we forget all that is acceptable before God. King Uzziah decided that he's going to burn incense before God. And the priest cried out to him, don't do it. You are not commanded. You are not called for that. And in his arrogance still went forth, burned the incense. Leprous broke out on him. And King Uzziah spent his last remaining days isolated. Locked away until he died. And Isaiah saying in that same year. I saw the Lord. I got a vision of God. You see, within the kingdom, and I do believe that the kingdom as it is with any political system, the people were divided. There were some that were mourning Uzziah for the good work that he did. And perhaps there were some who were praying that his end come quickly. Because he has, he has turned the people away from God. And in this midst of division, Isaiah saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. Isaiah got a hold of God's holiness. There is a similar account in Exodus chapter 19, if we may turn over there. Exodus 19. Take it from verse 16. It says, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings. And a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke. 
because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. The presence of God. Let us jump over now to chapter 20. Let us see something here. Verse 18 and 19. It says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. The children of Israel saw God's holiness. They understood what the presence of God meant. And they became afraid. And they said, Moses, you talk to God. We don't want to go before God because we are going to die. What they were essentially saying, we are unworthy to go before God. And when Isaiah saw this vision, the angels, the throne, the temple, the smoke, and he, he experienced the shaking of the post, he said, no, I am dead. Isaiah saw God's holiness. And he became afraid. You see, there are three things I want to reveal to us here about a vision of God's holiness. And the first thing that I want to point to our attention is the vision informs who is in control. You see, because when King Uzziah died, the people... They were divided. There, were, there was chaos. People were frustrated. What's going to happen next? Here is the death of a great leader. And Uzziah and, and Isaiah saw God high, exalted, seated upon a throne. What does that symbolize? What Isaiah was seeing is that through all that has been happening and what is happening now and what is yet to come, God is still upon the throne in control. That nothing happens by surprise. That even though things may be turning bad or on one side it is turning good, in the midst of the bad and the good, God still reigns and he is still in control. He governs over the affairs of man. So as much as Isaiah perhaps was perplexed within himself, God revealed that he is still in control. You see, earlier when I read Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Because sometimes when things are going bad, and we don't have a vision of where God is and his presence. We can take, thing upon, take things upon ourselves and end up in destruction. But when Isaiah saw the Lord seated upon the throne, he was comforted that God is still in control. He is still in control. He said, I saw the Lord high and exalted. And the train of his robe filling the temple. Isaiah gave us a threefold evidence of God's holiness and his reign, his control. The first one was that his position. He said, I saw him high, exalted. The throne which God was seated upon within Isaiah's vision was not just a regular chair. It was one that was elevated above. He said it was high. High and exalted. You see, holiness connotes the idea of being separated. God's throne, high, exalted, demonstrates that he is separated. 
from everything else. So he saw his position. You go to Buckingham Palace, you will find a throne. You go to the White House, you'll find the president's office and the president's chair. Only those who sit within those seats, those positions, has authority and control. When Isaiah saw God sitting upon that lofty, high, exalted chair, throne, he got to understand that God was first and foremost holy, separated, and that he's still in control. The second thing that Isaiah painted a picture of was the attire that God had. He said, I saw him and the train of his robe fills the temple. When my wife and I were getting married, one of the things she said, I want a veil and I want it long. I want it to drag on the floor. And they say, okay, if that's what you want, you're going to get it. She got it because to her, the veil meant something. That veil going there, it symbolized that it is a precious, auspicious moment for her. One that she would celebrate and celebrate gladly. You see, when we take a look at royalty when they enter in, one of the things, the longer the robe, the more it spoke of their, their, their excellence. It spoke of their honor. It spoke of their royalness. The length of the robe. And what Isaiah is saying, what I saw, the robe of God, it, 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 it was not just long, but it filled the temple. A throne that was exalted, but the robe was all around. It's saying that the, the excellency of God was beyond measure. His robe, it filled the temple. And I do believe if Isaiah wa wanted to have a seat, he would have been on top of the robe. It was everywhere. His attire. And the third thing that Isaiah saw, which he described, was the audience. He said, I saw the throne. I saw his attire, and I saw and I hear the audience. He said, I saw seraphims. They were exalted above the throne. They had six wings. Two, they covered their face because I am not worthy enough to look upon him whom I'm rendering my worship to. With two, they cover their feet. And some theologians would render it that they're covering their genitals. I am unworthy to expose myself before God. You remember when Peter was running out of the boat to meet Jesus? He had to gird up himself when he realized who he was among. The angels understanding the holiness of God, understand that I cannot go before God exposed. So to be exalted, rendering the praises unto him, they cover two, with two wings they cover their face, two they cover their feet, their body was covered, properly covered, and with two they fly. And he said, I saw the picture of reverence. That the audience was rendering unto him who sits upon the throne. And he said, not only that, did they carry themselves in reverence, uh, but their speech described the manner of worth that was deserving of him who was seated upon the throne. He said, they cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. You see, the reputation of the words holy 
was to concretize how holy God is. One, yeah, he is holy. Two times, oh man, he is holy. Three times, he is really, really holy. But they did not cry holy to God. The Bible said they cried one to another. It's like I'm looking at you and I'm declaring God is holy. He is holy. He is holy. And the other one would look at me and declare he is holy. He is holy. He is holy. It's a matter of declaration of God's worth. And above the praises, the angels crying, God was seated there. What would happen if we as a church one day just begin looking at each other and just declaring God's holiness? He's holy. He's holy. <sighs> Night and day, the seraphims cry, declaring, holy is the Lord. Set apart, yet worthy of the praises. The second thing that I want to point our attention to, as we seek to grasp a vision of God's holiness, one of the things that the vision reveals is our inadequacies and faults. A vision of God's holiness reveals how unworthy we are. The children of Israel saw it. Isaiah saw it. Isaiah declared, woe is me. I am destroyed. I am undone. I am dead. Because Isaiah had a picture of himself. He saw himself for who he truly was. Sometimes we become numb to the reality of our own selves. Perhaps unconscious at times. And we walk about Unaware of ourselves. And being unaware of ourselves, how then are we able to offer unto God that which is due unto him? How can we then approach God when we aren't aware of who we truly are? You see? When Isaiah saw the vision, it was a splendor. Don't get me wrong. It was a splendor. It was beautiful. It was something to look upon. But after gazing around and seeing everything, Isaiah's first words... It could have been wow. But he somehow changed the last letter. He changed the W with an E. He said, woe is me. What was meant to be a wow became a woe. Because Isaiah saw himself. He saw himself for who he truly was. He got a hold of the vision. When we read Exodus, when God commanded Moses, that he said, I'm coming to visit the children of Israel. You know what God commanded Moses to do? He said, sanctify the people. 
Sanctify them. Cleanse them. Let them be a holy people before presenting themselves before me. How often are we concerned about sanctifying our lives before going before God? How much aware are we of our own weaknesses, our frailties? That we would examine and cleanse our lives before approaching a holy God. Isaiah saw himself. And there, were, there was a twofold reason for his woe. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. In other words, my own life is unworthy. I am a sinful man. My own life. Isaiah saw himself. But not only that, he saw the company that he was associated with. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. But also I dwell among some people of unclean lips. You see, there is a woe for our own for our own lives, how we live it. And there is a woe for the company that we keep. Just a few weeks ago, Dr. Grizzle shared on that when speaking about the vessels that are honorable. The company. You see, our association can be the reason for our downfall or our upliftment. Who we are associated with. Even though perchance Isaiah may have been holy, he would have still been at the point of condemnation because of his company. I think it's Proverbs 22. That says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. There is a consequence for the company that we keep. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I think. It says, bad company corrupts good morals. There is a consequence for the company that we keep. And I don't know why God is reminding us as a church of this. Watch your company. Sometimes we can feel safe under the church umbrella. And say, well, they are not unsafe. They are not sinners. But though they might be under the church umbrella, if their lives aren't lived in a holy manner, you are positioning yourself for destruction. If we desire to be right with God and to please him in all that we do, then a gaze into God's holiness is necessary. For it gives an introspective approach of our lives and those that are around us. Isaiah was exposed and his company was exposed. But Brother Ash, Philemon, what is the whole point of you highlighting these? What's the sense of speaking about Isaiah's vision? You see, the third thing is where the crux of the matter is found. When God revealed his holiness unto Isaiah and revealed to Isaiah his very own inner self and the company that he was around, it was meant to point him in the right direction. You see, a vision of God's holiness is just to point us in the right direction. After Isaiah declared, woe is me, 
The Bible declares that an angel came with a coal, touched his lips, purified him. And after Isaiah was made right, then God spoke. After Isaiah was made right, then God spoke. I don't know where we are as individuals, whether or not we are hearing the voice of God or not. Whether we need to be repositioned or realigned. Isaiah had to, in order to hear the voice of God. And all God said was, who shall I send? Who would represent us as a messenger of holiness? Who will share the message of holiness to the people? Who would be that person? And Isaiah, after recognizing who God really is, said, I will go. Because the people need to know. He said, send me. Because the people need to hear. He said, the company I keep need to know that there is a call to realign themselves with the holy God. He said, I will go. Perhaps we are called upon consciously. And unaware of our position, there is a call to grab a hold of the vision of God's holiness. Perhaps our society has brought us to a place where we are numb. That we have forgot who God is and what holiness requires. When there is destruction and ruin... God's on the search for a vessel that would carry his holiness. When King Uzziah died, after leading the people into idolatry, God was looking for someone to share the message of holiness. What are you doing with the vision? What are you doing with the vision of God's holiness? Are you a messenger today that would speak like Isaiah? Send me, Lord. I will go. I will be a representative and share about your holiness. See, holiness is not a matter of choice. If we ever desire to please God, then he requires from us holiness. Throughout scripture, there's the command, be ye holy, says the Lord, for I am holy. Through all of the children of Israel's rituals, practices, traditions, God was seeking to communicate Holiness unto them. In the manner of who he is. And what he requires. Of his people. Shall we bow this morning? There's a song that says. When I look into your holiness when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surrounds becomes shadows in the light of you I worship you God is calling he's calling 
He's calling us to a place of holiness. One where we would see the vision of who he truly is. And worship him from that place of understanding. Father, we thank you today for reminding us through your word. And through the vision of Isaiah of who you are. You are God all by yourself. You are still in control over the affairs of man. Nothing ever catches you by surprise. In the good and in the bad, you still reign upon your throne. High and exalted, set apart, holy, holy, holy. Are you, O oh Lord? My prayer today, O oh God, for your people, everyone that is present here today, and even those that may be hearing us via virtual means, O oh God. Father, we pray today that the message of holiness, the awareness of the call to holiness, will ever be present before our eyes, oh God. You are holy. And you require holiness from your people. I pray, oh God, today, that in this moment of consecration, as we consecrate our lives unto you, oh God, I pray that you would empty us, empty us, oh God, of anything that may have grabbed a hold of our lives, being attached to us, oh God, that has rendered us unworthy. We are praying, oh God, that an introspection of our own selves and those that are around us, oh God, Lord, will be revealed unto us. That we, oh God, like Isaiah, will confess our faults. We will confess our shortcomings. We will confess our erring to you, oh God. That we may have the opportunity of being cleansed. Being made right. To be messengers of holiness, oh God. Where there seems to be compromise within society today. Even as it, it stands with the doctrine, oh God, that we have held on to for many years. The compromise, oh God. Because we do not want to offend anyone. Father, we are praying today. That our awareness of your holiness will bring us to a place, oh God, where we are prostrate before you. To render unto you the respect that is due unto your name. And avoid every form of compromise as it pertains to carrying your word, your message. You call us to live a holy life, oh God. And I'm praying, oh God, Lord, in every area of our lives. We will, oh God, Lord, be holy before you. Holy in our homes. Holy, oh God, at our jobs. Holy in our private lives, oh God. May we live ever holy before you. Because you require holiness. For without holiness, no man can see you, O oh Lord. So we present our lives before you today. And we reconsecrate ourselves to you. We rededicate ourselves to you. Wash us. Purify us. That our lives be lived in honor of you who have called us. Holy in every area. We thank you today, oh God. Give us the strength, even in our own weakness, that 
we may persevere on to please you in every area of our lives, oh God. We give you the thanks. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We join with the seraphims today. And we declare, oh God, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word today. <clears throat> thank God for his word. <clears throat> His servant who has been prepared as a holy vessel <clears throat> to which God could flow and speak to us today. There's no person who has ever seen God and, uh, and remain the same. There's something transforming, transformative about, about meeting God. Your life will change. And really and truly, I don't think too many people have really known, met God in a vision that is so real and transforming. And God remains an abstract entity. You know, Isaiah was a prophet many years before. He met King Uzziah. God called him to be a prophet. And not until King Uzziah died did he see God and was sent by God to do what God had called him to do. Could be that this man was really an impediment, an obstacle in the way of Isaiah. A giant, political, uh, I mean, a political giant. He was so big. Perhaps Isaiah was lost in the shadow, but he died. There are some things perhaps that need to die in our lives before we can see God. But when we see God, we're never the same again. And you're looking at one who has met God in reality, in a transforming way. Visions of God too, yes. No one can hoodwink me about who God is by faith and the reality of God. I know God to myself. You can get to know this God. He's real. He's real. But let's, let's take the blinders off, the obstacles out of the way. Amen. Amen. Thank, thanks, my brother. <clears throat> um, Pastor Morin and, and myself want to th thank the church and many who are here today for the wonderful pastoral celebration, the acknowledgement, the pastor's, uh, what do we call it again? Appreciation Sunday. Two weeks ago, I wasn't here last week, Sunday, because I couldn't uh, declare this to you, but we've been deeply touched and blessed, and we just feel embraced by your love. And Pastor Morin says, please tell you thanks. Thanks. I want to say for myself also, thanks. It was awesome, we would say. And we don't say, whoa, we say, wow. Oh, you wowed us. Thanks. God bless you. Father, we just commit now your people to, into your care. And so you, we pray that today they will go out and be the people of God, people with hope, people with a purpose, a people who know their God, a God who is real, 
And God, may the light, their light shining in darkness this week. May your blessing be upon them. Prosper them. Crown their efforts with success. And may they, O God, redound, may they redound your praise and your glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. Please come out next week. I got a special word next for next week. I've been preaching for, for the first time in quite a while. <clears throat>